love the law, and I love how the law works, and I love, I love God's law. God's law, to me, is the coolest thing in the world. Even when you read the New Testament, even when you read the New Testament, you'll all, you'll all the time hear Paul talk. He's, he's talking like a lawyer. He'll talk about, uh, of all these things, this is the sum. Or he'll say, uh, what, what shall we say for, what, what, we shall, what shall we say to these things? He's giving a summation like a lawyer would in a courtroom. He's got the jury there, and he's pleading his case. And Paul had to do this. We're studying in the book of Acts on Sunday morning in Sunday school. And Paul had to do this. He had to plead his case. And he did it by way of Roman law. Okay? He's appealing to Roman law. And he's also telling the Jews who are accusing him, I followed the Old Testament law, and I was in the temple keeping the law when you came and arrested me. And so I love the law. Okay? The Bible talks about the letter of the law, what the law says. Okay? And I've heard some people say, well, you interpret it that way. No, 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 no. No, no. And what, what is it that we're dealing with in this country with our Constitution? Our Constitution right now is being eroded by judges who are trying to reinterpret the original intent of the letter of the Constitution. They're trying to reinterpret it. We're dealing with a situation right now in the St. Louis area where a, uh, w one, of these, um, one of these communities, I think it's uh, St. Charles or something like that, is wanting to, uh, wanting to uh, pass an ordinance... I think they're going to vote on it tonight. They're wanting to pass an ordinance that would prohibit people within the city limits of, uh, listen to this now, of using a pellet gun on squirrels. Because squirrels get in and they chew electric wires and they do damage to homes and everything like that. And the Missouri Constitution gives us the right to keep and bear arms. The United States Constitution gives us the right to keep and bear arms. And the, the city of St. I think it's St. Charles, is going to pass an ordinance that says you cannot use a pellet gun to defend your house and your property against squirrels. That's not fair to the squirrels. And so the, some people said, you go ahead and pass the law. We're going to put it in court the next morning is when it's going to be in court. And we're going to sue for our rights. And so I, I love the law. And it's the letter of the law. The law says that we have a right to keep and to bear arms. And Congress cannot infringe in that. No legislation body can infringe on our rights to have a gun. I have a gun. I've got several at home. And you never know, I just might have one with me. Uh, and I have that right, and that's what the law says. And so I want to read to you the fourth commandment. And, I, and here's what I want you to do, okay? Um, <laughs> and, and Jill from England is writing on Skype. She says, I have a dog that would polish off the squirrels if given the chance. Uh, she has a right to keep a bear dog, if she wants. I'm reading, now, I want you to listen to this now, okay? Because the whole gist of the Seventh-day Adventist movement and those who are like them say that public and corporate worship must only be done on Saturday. Okay? That's what they say. So I'm going to read to you the Fourth Commandment and I'm going to ask, I want you to listen very carefully and see if you hear that in the fourth commandment. Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it. Thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Uh, it does not say that we must worship only on Saturday. It does not say that. And it doesn't say that keeping the Sabbath is going to church. It doesn't say that. What does it say? It says to remember the Sabbath day, It said, and remember it to keep it holy. How do you keep the Sabbath day holy? By remembering it. How do we, how do we bring it into remembrance? 
by an action of ours that is described in the law as resting. But there is not a law anywhere that prohibits public worship or even private worship of our God on any other day nor demands it only on one day. It doesn't exist in the law. It doesn't exist. That's according to this. Now, if you want to get if you want to get your prophecies from here or you want to get them from here, great controversy or national Sunday law. Okay? Um, if you want to get your if you want that to be your sure word of prophecy, knock yourself out. Okay? Uh, but it's, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, let's see here. What's going on in the world? Oh, I wanted to read about our buddy Joel. Uh, let's see here. Let me get to it. Uh, Joel Osteen says to Oprah Winfrey, Homosexuality is a sin, but gay people would get into heaven. Okay, and I've had several people send me this, so here it is. Pastor Joel Osteen has made a name for himself as a positive and uplifting minister who focuses in on life's pleasantries. Uh, despite his wild popularity, he's also frequently criticized by some who feel he doesn't address some of the more nitty-gritty issues that exist in both the secular and religious worlds. When it comes to sin, something Osteen clearly believes in but rarely discusses in his sermons... The faith leader, I, I have an issue with that one, but we'll move on, is often targeted for not addressing the issue up front and regularly. On Sunday, Enon, Oprah Winfrey interviewed Osteen on her new program, Oprah's Next Chapter, where he delved deeply into his views on homosexuality and sin. Um, quote, will a gay person be accepted into heaven as you see it? Unquote. Oprah asked the famed pastor. I believe they will, he responded. Sometimes we look at gay being a bigger sin than being proud or not telling the truth. I don't think God categorizes sins. Not bad, huh? Uh, here Osteen made it clear that he believes homosexuality is sinful. But Oprah pushed him a bit harder to solidify it. Now be careful, Oprah. Don't push on him too hard. He's very breakable and, and not as bendable as we think. Um, to, to solidify his stance, asking, quote, does that mean that you're saying that you believe that, let me, let me, try, let me try an Oprah voice here. Does that believe, she kind of has a deep, channeled voice. Does that believe, I, I can't do it. Does that mean that you're saying that you believe that being gay is a sin? I believe that homosexuality is shown as a sin in the scripture, he responded. Oprah it's a hard thing in a sense because I'm for everybody. I'm not against anybody. I don't think anybody's second class, Osteen continued. As he explained that the Bible's message on the matter, in his view, is clear. So, Osteen and homosexuality. Just give you, give you, give you something to think about, Okay. Uh, give you something to think about. And there was something else, too. Uh, listen, this came in uh, the other day. It came into my other email address. Uh, says, uh, I'm praying for your granddaughter. Let me stop right here. Um, I, I would ask everybody to continue to pray. Uh, yesterday was a fantastic day. Uh, if you watched uh, our service on Sunday, which we, we broadcast it briefly, but we didn't uh, Sunday night. Uh, but we didn't we didn't upload it. It was a prayer time, and um, our granddaughter Adeline uh, is was very very sick. They had to remove her off the heart lung machine, uh, or that would have killed her. And they're just taking a chance right now that she'll recover from that. And as of Sunday, she was not doing well at all. Uh, she was very 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 sick. Oxygen level not doing well. So we spent the night on the on the altar Sunday night praying. And then Monday, my wife and I went into the room, and her oxygen level was almost 100%. And both of us stood there just crying and 
We spent the day at the hospital yesterday, and we were just thanking the Lord. And today, she's not doing well again. And um, my wife has been prayerful. She's been in the scriptures. I have too. And um, we covet your prayers, and we covet them for um, uh, for uh, pray for her, pray for Adeline. Uh, pray that God will bless her little body. And she is weak and frail, and. And there's most most things right now she cannot do on her own. That just sounds like that just sounds like me. And uh, so anyway, pray for her. Pray for my daughter Lindsay and her husband Antonio. And uh, Antonio mentioned to me that he's he's trying to be strong in the Lord. And I said it's okay if we're not because when we're weak, God is strong. You know what? I'm glad I believe that. By the way, I'm glad I believe what I believe. I'm glad I believe what the scriptures. That in our weakness, God is made strong. And, um, you know, the, the, here's God helps those who help themselves. Uh, that's not in the Bible. And in, in, in the thought's not in the Bible either. Uh, God helps those who cannot help themselves. And so pray for their family. Pray for my wife and I. And um, this, this is hard to go through. It, it's very, very difficult not knowing what's going to happen. And uh, we want her to live. And we want to hold her in our arms. We've not been able to do that yet. And we want to see our daughter and son-in-law raise her in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And we have one granddaughter already that we love dearly. And um, we, we want a bunch of them. Okay? And uh, so just please continue to pray for them. Um, let me show you this. Somebody sent me this and asked me what I thought about it. This is the anti-Bethel. You know, here's Bethel Church here, okay, uh, at Area 52, and uh, then there's the anti-Bethel, and we preach Christ and Him crucified, and and when I say Christ crucified, I I listen. If you don't know me by now, I believe in the absolute finished work of the cross, the finished work of the cross, so that and, and I'll tell you, can I tell you what I did on the Sabbath day? Those of you who want to judge me for what you think I did on the Sabbath. Can I tell you what I did on the Sabbath day? On Saturday, you know what I did? I rested. I sure did, and I enjoyed it, okay? Uh, we had a tough week before that. We're having a tough week already this week with, with Adeline and everything like that. And I can see, I can conceive in my mind how that this coming Saturday, I, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to do, and that is rest. But what happens when I don't rest on Saturday? Uh, am I breaking the law? Well, in some cases, yeah. Okay, and I'll tell you this, if I come here on Saturday, I'm working. Okay, I'm doing my labor and I'm doing and and I just don't I'm gotten to, I'm getting to where I just don't do that anymore. But it, is it possible for, for me to break the fourth commandment? Absolutely. Is it possible for me to break the fifth one and the sixth one and the seventh one, the eighth one, the ninth one, and the tenth one? Absolutely. It's highly in fact I won't say it's possible, I'd say it's probable. And um we are weak. We break the law, but I believe in the finished work of Christ. Is that if if we are found with sin, Christ died for those sins, because we cannot, we cannot. What? Why did Paul write? Why did Paul write the book of Galatians? He wrote it to to tell people, look, we we'd had a meeting on this. Okay, we had a meeting on this, and it was decided why should we make the Gentiles do what the Jews never could do? Okay, it'd be one thing if the Jews kept the law. They never did. Okay? Um, and so anyway, if a man offends the law in one point, he's guilty of all. So I believe in the finished work of Christ on the cross, and I believe you call upon the name of the Lord and God will save you. Bill Johnson of Bethel Church in Redding, California, does not believe that. Oh, he likes to say that he does. He talks about Jesus and God and the Holy Ghost and this and that, this and, that and the other. But he's, got a, he's always got a new thing going. And this is called the invasion. The invasion. You know what? I did a video called the invasion. Okay? Uh, here several years ago. You can get a copy of that if you want. But he's got the kingdom invasion going. Him and a couple other guys. Going to have a big meeting. And uh, you know, I wonder if I still have that website pulled up. Yeah, here it is. Okay? Got a big meeting coming up. And uh, let's see, what's it called? It's called the School of Healing and Impartation. And uh, you've got to go to school now to get healing.